Hi, this is your Sapil Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of Cloud Evolution. And today we have with us once again Ari Weil, VP of Product Marketing at Akamai. Ari, it's great to see you again. We saw each other at KubeCon and you know, today we have another exciting story from Akamai to talk about. Yeah, I'm excited to be on the program again. Thanks, Bob. It's my pleasure. Could quickly talk about what did you folks announce? It's a managed container service uh, because you and I talked recently, so I do have an understanding where Akamai is heading to, but I also want to see where this uh, offering fits into your larger cloud strategy, larger edge strategy, larger AI strategy. So let's start with what you're announcing and why. So Akamai has announced uh, managed container service which is a way for customers to provide us with an application in a containerized uh, environment that we will host, operate, and distribute on behalf of the customer. So our customers tell us that they have an application that they need to reach uh, a certain audience. They give us the business logic and the requirements for that application. And then we deploy it on the Akamai platform with the ability to scale the compute resources out to any edge location that we have on our distributed network of 4,200 plus points of presence. But we can leverage any of the compute resources that we have from the core to the edge. And so we're taking advantage of the continuum of compute and the flexibility of Akamai's platform. We're simplifying the deployment and operations for our customers using containers. And then we're allowing the customer to operate their application at scale so that they can reach and deliver uh, an optimal experience to all of their users wherever they are. So it eliminates complexity, it speeds time to market. And because of the flat predictable pricing that Akamai has and our very generous egress allowances and low cost egress, we also believe that it will dramatically improve the performance and cost profile of their application. If you look at Akamai's, of course, through Linode acquisition as well, presence, you know, 300 or more cities, uh, 4,300 point of presence. What does it mean for enterprises who do want to deploy cloud native applications, cloud native architecture, but what are the roadblocks that they hit that this managed container service and Akamai's reach will address? Absolutely. So I, I think a lot of companies, as they start to move towards platform engineering as a way to accelerate their time to market and simplify operations, they're running into some challenges. The first question is, if I want to use a container, what sort of container platform should I use? Some enterprises, for example, have experiences with Docker. Akamai and the Cloud Native Compute Foundation really favor uh, Kubernetes because of the portability that it enables and the speed of improvement of the platform with all of the open source contributions that uh, Kubernetes enjoys. And so as you start to deploy in a containerized environment, the first question is, do my engineers, do my developers understand how to build in Kubernetes and scale Kubernetes at scale? So they can use Kubernetes as is on the Akamai platform, formerly Linode, or they can decide that they want to start using a proprietary implementation for the hyperscalers. That brings in the next consideration, which is how am I going to consider my application architecture over time? Do I need to take advantage of multiple clouds? In which case, if I do, using proprietary implementations of Kubernetes presents a challenge. There's operational overhead, there's a skills gap, there's the need to really think about which flavor of Kubernetes will I use for which elements of my application. And again, if we focus just on using pure open source Kubernetes, then you don't have to consider those things with the Akamai platform because you'll build on Kubernetes as the open source project, and then that is fully portable to any cloud. As you start to scale and you do your day two operations forward, think about managing a fleet of containers, think about different scalability and security requirements, the overhead and the toil associated with scaling Kubernetes becomes a real challenge. And so with that, we have our application platform, which is also based on open source that allows you to deploy golden templates that will give you ready to run uh, application environments on Kubernetes that are much easier and faster for your organization to scale. Which then brings the third question of when you scale, where are you scaling to, and what sort of an outcome are you pursuing? If your goal 
goal is to realize low latency application performance. And especially if you have a very data intensive workflow, something like AI inference or agentic AI or you know, more mainstream use cases like hyper personalization or even media streaming use cases, then the limitations of the existing hyperscaler clouds, as much as they have capacity and availability to scale centrally, they really struggle when you go to scale out to the edge of the internet because their CDNs typically don't have the same reach that Akamai has. They don't have the addressability of the compute resources that Akamai has on our platform. And so you end up with this challenge of, do I want to now start to also, in addition to operating Kubernetes at scale, operate my own versions of, if I'm an AWS outpost? so that I can continue to use AWS services, but I have the ability to extend to where my customers are. With the Akamai Managed Container Service, you can take advantage of a managed Kubernetes service in the Akamai Cloud. You can take advantage of the full footprint and presence that Akamai maintains in over 700 cities worldwide. And then you have the granularity to scale up where you see demand in those 4,300 plus points of presence that we maintain uh, and then we can manage a lot of the fluidity that exists with bursts in traffic or bursts in demand by basically um, managing the distribution and the scale up of your container on your behalf, where we're using your business logic and the requirements of your application to guide us. And then you have the flexibility as a customer to just focus on operating the application itself, not the application and the infrastructure that it runs on. We are once again uh, kind of democratizing it, simplifying it, letting them focus. That's what we always talk about, that developers, you know, these companies should focus on their core business, not all this plumbing, you know, because they waste so much resource in all these things that doesn't add any value to their business. So it's like going back to those, you know, that, that's, that was the whole idea of running things on cloud is someone else's computer, so I don't have to worry about it, right? But now if you look at, we were at KubeCon, you know, the whole thing is how to manage your cloud. Now, can you also talk about, if you look at this announcement, and if you look at previous announcement, you know, of course, your Kubernetes services, last year at KubeCon, you folks also made a big splash with app platform. Uh, what kind of uh, patterns, trajectory we are seeing at Akamai if you look at this announcement today? So what we see is a range of use cases on the platform. Anything from people who are looking to understand uh, how to develop more modern architectures or satisfy more, more pressing use cases that their customers are demanding using the Akamai Cloud. It's very easy to get started. It's easy to scale up your workload. Uh, and we provide a, a great environment for dev and test because we make it very, very simple to iterate on the platform and have predictable pricing while you're going through that stage of your development life cycle. But if we think about the way that we're architecting the entire platform, our goal is to provide developers with the choice to use whatever services, whatever independent software vendors that they choose are the most appropriate for them. And if they wanna use an upstream project on our application platform, they can work that into an automated deployment where they will consistently have the latest version of that upstream project. It will be fully integrated into their Kubernetes environment, and they'll be able to very quickly create that application environment that they need for their application. If we take that a step back and say, you know what, I don't know if I want to use Kubernetes. I'm not sure what I want to use. Then all of the services that we're offering, all of the projects that we're making available through our one-click marketplace and the independent software vendors that are building out onto our platform allow you to start to use distributed data, distributed applications, web assembly. If you're interested in doing data and storage intensive workloads or building out new architectures that need to focus there, but everything that we're offering has a very clear price. It doesn't have the complexity of the different ways to meter between traffic between services. You know, if you have uh, scalability events that drive up the use of one service versus another, we make it very easy for developers to understand those dynamics. We make it very affordable for them to figure out the application architecture and how to enable and optimize scalability events. And then with the power of the rest of Akamai's portfolio, we also give you market leading solutions for security. So if you wanna do workload security, API security, full application security, whether that's at you know, layers uh, three or layer seven, you have integrated capabilities throughout the Akamai platform that are all there to minimize the cost 
of operating your application and to really maximize the ROI that you realize because we're making it much clearer how much you have to invest in our cloud versus how quickly you make it to market and what sort of an outcome you realize from your customer adoption. And so what we're focused on from end to end is basically bringing more ROI to your development uh, projects and make it easier for you to launch and scale applications without worrying that if you need to take advantage of another cloud services or if you want to use another uh, cloud platform, whether it's a platform as a service or software as a service, we are facilitating and making it as easy as possible for customers to evolve their architectures without the concerns of lock-in and without worrying about how, you know, maybe shifting a workload from the Akamai cloud to another cloud that might be more fit for purpose for a given service is going to jeopardize the agreement that they have or the commitments that they have with us, which is one of the main levers that we see the hyperscalers using to try to basically create a friendly prison for people on their own platforms. This is so refreshing to hear because, uh, of course, every, I don't want to name any company, hyperscaler, cloud providers. Yeah, we are here to help customers, but, you know, we can talk data gravity, we talk address. It's more about locking them in. It's less about serving the customers. It's totally opposite. But when I hear also, Akamai, security, your sense, CDN, I mean, if you look at the internet, all the streaming services you use, it is possible because of CDN. And then, of course, your support for Kubernetes, of course, containers, and all these cloud native technologies. So, uh, can you also talk about, I mean, I asked that question uh, at Kubecon also, from the perspective of Kubecon audience, how they should look at Akamai, but in general, how should people look at Akamai today? So Akamai is evolving from the roots that we had in a content delivery network and an edge computing platform to adding robust security services over the, the last, call it 10 or so years, to now really expanding to be a full platform, a full cloud platform for developers to build, secure, and scale any of the applications that uh, they feel need to maintain low latency, have really high throughput, and reach users where they are while maintaining a consistent user experience and performance profile. So from a developer perspective, when you think about Akamai, you think about us when you need that speed, when you need that scale, and then also you know, increasingly when you need that flexibility. We've brought the lessons that we've learned from our roots in CDN where developers and the companies that they work for made it very clear that we want to work with you and you need to make us want to work with you as well, as opposed to forcing us or locking us into your platform. And so as we look to the future, what we're looking to bring more uh, forward to developers is access to specialty hardware. Uh, Gartner recently named Akamai an emerging leader in generative AI infrastructure services because of the way that we've decided to invest in GPUs that were tailored to media streaming and AI inference on our platform, as opposed to heavyweight H100 based GPUs, for example, that are more appropriate for building and training large language models. We believe that most developers are going to invest their time and they're going to want to upskill on how do I build applications that take advantage of a small language model or a fine tuned model and spend less time thinking about the data science challenges and some of the other uh, complexities of building and training centralized LLMs. From there, we want to think about how do we make that developer experience as uh, easy and enjoyable as, as humanly possible. And there, when we look at some of our closest um, ISV partners, We've got companies like Fermion, where they have you know, Spin and they've got WebAssembly available for developers to very quickly build and distribute applications with a truly enjoyable front-end experience and a developer uh, interface that is going to make it much faster and much more enjoyable for them to develop their applications. If we look at API gateways, which you know APIs are the connective tissue of any modern application, we're partnering with forward-looking uh, organizations like Zuplo that are really making it a better experience for developers to build, evaluate, and scale their APIs as a part of their overall microservice architecture or application. And carrying forward into the future, our goal is really to make Cloud infrastructure service is available for anybody who wants the utmost control and flexibility over how they're building in the cloud. We also want to offer platform as a service capabilities so that you can focus more on building and less on sort of the hardcore operations, IT and DevOps concerns of operating your applications at scale. 
And so in that sense, we'll abstract away a lot of that infrastructure. We do some of that today with our managed Kubernetes engine, managed databases and the application platform, but we're expanding that even further with solutions like the managed container service so that we truly are just giving you an interface to define your business logic and your app scaling dynamics. And then the rest of the operations are being done by Akamai. And then if we think about where we go from there, we are starting to enable vertical specific solutions for the sorts of developers that have very specific industry aligned use cases that they need to satisfy. One of our first use cases and earliest customers on the managed container service is interested in a streaming media use case where they've got a large licensed agreement where they'll have millions of concurrent viewers and those, con those viewers are, are arrayed around the globe. And so depending on the time of day when they might log in to view something or where they're located in the world, we want to make sure that we've got the ability to very quickly encode, transcode, package, optimize, and deliver their streams. We're also, because of the security capability that we have, working on making sure that that content that they use to monetize isn't pirated. And we have solutions where we can do things like token uh, invalidation and we can bring down pirated streams in real time so that we can keep all of the work that the developers are doing to enable that stream focused on their platform and their application without fragmenting their brand or fragmenting their audience to pirates. Uh, if we think about AI inference, we, we at KubeCon announced the AI uh, inference solution or Akamai Cloud inference. And that brings together some specialty hardware and specialty software that we're using to enable the very rapid building and scaling of AI powered applications when you already have either a large language model that you've trained or a commercial model and perhaps that you're, you're leveraging otherwise and then take the outputs of that, the fine-tuned models, the small language model that might answer a very specific use case, like some of our customers are using this for uh, fit room applications for apparel, where we've got generative AI interfaces for in-car and mobile application assistance. We're seeing text-to-speech applications using those. And so we're seeing a number of different use cases, but all focused on AI. And so those, those GPUs that are specific for AI inference are really coming to bear there, as well as our partnership with Vast Data for a data fabric uh, vector database that we make available either standalone or as a managed database service. So there's a number of tools for AI inference that we're focused on. And we're then moving forward to application optimization, uh, marketing optimization, where we can focus on the type of traffic that you're seeing to your application and provide you with more ready-built tools to really manage that audience. Uh, and so in each case, you know, whether it's VPUs for media delivery and having lower cost, faster transcoding, inference where we use specific GPUs that are really geared towards inference or bringing forward the power of our CDN, our bot management capability, and even in our account protection for app optimization and business optimization, there are purpose-built solutions on the cloud already, but we'll look to extend those going forward so that developers have either the raw compute primitives that they need for flexibility or the platform as a service capabilities and those application services that are geared towards an industry so that they can very quickly spin up applications in their core domain of focus uh, with, with some of the tools, but without the proprietary wrappers around those tools that would enable them to get to market faster, realize better ROI, but also ensure that they have the flexibility to evolve their applications as they need to, to support their business going forward. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. And of course, uh, give us an update on managed container service. Thank you for your great insights as usual. And I look forward to chat with you again. Thank you. It was my pleasure, Swap. Thank you. Take care.